March 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 15 from the New Testament. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit in me. He prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it will bear more fruit. You are clean already because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit, because apart from me you can accomplish nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a branch and dries up. And such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and are burnt up. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My father is honored by this, that you bear much fruit and show that you are my disciples. Just as the father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my father's commandments and remained in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, to love one another just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that one lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because the slave does not understand what his master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have revealed to you everything I heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that remains so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you this. I command you to love one another. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you do not belong to the world, but I chose you out of the world, for this reason the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they obeyed my word, they will obey yours too. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But they no longer have any excuse for their sin. The one who hates me hates my father too. If I had not performed among them the miraculous deeds that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen the deeds and have hated both me and my father. Now this happened to fulfill the word that is written in their law. They hated me without reason. When the advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also will testify because you have been with me from the beginning. God John fifteen sixteen is one of my all-time favorite passages, that you chose me to be your child. Now, at this moment, until we get to probably Romans and Ephesians, uh, we probably shouldn't talk that much about election and predestination. We'll get completely sidetracked, but you chose me. Just like you chose your other children, you chose me, I didn't choose you. Anybody who thinks that they chose their salvation has that so backwards and, and that ego that, that we're in charge of this and not giving you the, the authority of power and control over everything that you made just baffles me. But I love this, you chose me. And then you go on to talk about how the world hates you. If I simply say I believe in you, which as the Bible says, even the demons believe in you. If I simply say I believe in you, but I don't actually follow with my heart, with my actions um, to completely become your disciple, then I belong to the world. And you're really clear. If I belong to the world, the world will love me. And we see this all the time. We see Hollywood stars 
who are adored, um, mega wealthy people in this world uh, who are looked up to and respected in this world. If those were things of value, you would have sent Jesus into our lives in a completely different way than a, a tiny child in a manger because their parents because his parents had absolutely no money that's not what you value you don't value the things of this world you value our obedience to you and that we glorify you and we do that by going out and telling other people about you i'm always amazed how many people take bits and pieces out of this particular chapter in the bible and dilute it and change it around for their own power that if we pray for what we want as long as we say we're Christian (laughs) then you'll give us what we want and that's not what this chapter says in the slightest we have to be in your will we have to be obedient we have to ask for forgiveness of our sins we have to remove those other sins in order for your will to be done and 99% of the time what we're actually asking for isn't what we need or what we can handle or what what is most effective for our lives and instead you give us something so much better than what it is that we're asking for like the fact that you chose me first I think about that a lot I think about the world versus you and I think just based upon how it's portrayed It is so incredibly easy to choose Satan's way, the world's way. Rich, famous, cars, homes, men, women on your arms, the world at your feet. It is so much more difficult to choose a path where you know it's not going to be comfortable. You're going to be persecuted. But my reward for that is I get to spend eternity with you. I will have more reward than any single person here on earth or the totality of people here on earth by getting to spend the rest of my life in heaven worshiping you. It's a hard concept to tell some people, which is why I go back to What a blessing it is that you choose us, (laughs) that we don't choose you. We accept your gift that you offer, offer us. That's part of our free will. But the fact that you chose us, that you wrote our names down in a book before the worlds were even created. That is just absolutely amazing to me. So even though we're persecuted, and I'm definitely not persecuted to the level people in other countries are in the slightest, I'm okay with that because the things of this world truly are temporary. They can be taken away in a moment or worse yet, you could spend the rest of your life living of the world amongst all the, the riches and the wealth and the fakeness of the world. God, thank you for all that you've given me. I am truly, truly blessed to be your child. And I pray that my actions continue to glorify you throughout this day and throughout the rest of my life. In your son's name we pray. Amen.